Hey guys, Brandon here from All About DIY, coming to you on a brisk 54 degree Southern California morning. Um, today's video, we're going to talk about do-it-yourself CO2 systems for your planted aquarium. Now, there are a couple different types of systems that you can use. Um, this one today, we'll be doing the cane sugar and active yeast solution. Um, I find that this this works really well for me. Um, it's worked well in all of my tanks and um, I hope it works well for you. Um, so what you're gonna need are two water bottles, any type, any size, whatever you like. I like to use Fiji, this is going on my wife's tank, so she likes it nice and pretty and matching and all that stuff, so I'm sure some of you can can uh, follow right along with that. So um, yeah, we got airline tubing. I use aquarium silicone to make sure my seals are airtight, because that's what you're gonna want for the best flow and no leaks, because it, it smells when it leaks. Trust me, it smells like I don't know, like rotten bread or something. Anyways, um, we got super glue, um, suction cups to route it real nice in your tank, a check valve so that the tank water doesn't come back into your system, um, optional air stones to disperse your uh, CO2, a pair of scissors for cutting airline tubing. Um, some people use a drill to drill holes into the caps. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, I like to use this here torch and this screwdriver because it makes a really nice clean hole. It's a little bit more dangerous, but um, it makes a nice clean hole and you don't have shavings down in your bottle and um, it just works better for me. That's just that's just the way I like to do it. Um, do it outside though, it kind of gets a little fumey. You don't want that inside your house. Your wife will chew you out for that one. And then I also like to use um, some sort of internal filter, a power head or you know, one of these little top thin um, internal filters. I like to use um, these right here because they're they're nice and powerful and it's got a sponge to filter it out and you know your CO2 you'll you'll plug into the bottom here it'll suck it up through the pump and expel it out through this spray bar this one same deal this is a little via aqua power head um, and it's really easy because you can just stick your your feed tube from your system up into here and it'll shred the little bubbles out into your tank and so you know it, it works good it looks good um, the only thing is you will not get 100% solubility. Um, with these two methods, um, I can do another video on how to do that. But if you're just starting out and you've never done this before, you're not going to want 100% solubility because you won't know how to measure how much CO2 is in your tank and you could end up suffocating your fish and you do not want to do that. So um, yeah, if your fish are gasping for air at the top of the water after you've set the system up, you know you got too much in there. So keep that in mind. So um, yeah, let's get started. First, you're going to want to light your torch. Did I bring lighter out here? I didn't. Let me go get something. I forgot something. And we're back. Okay, so first thing, you gotta light this bad boy. Be careful when you do this, children. Ask a parent. are lit. Yeah. In case you want to get the screwdriver real nice and hot and you're going to want to plunge it into the tops of the caps. So in the large bottle that is going to be where your mixture is going to go and we'll talk about that at the end of the video when we mix it up and in the small one that's going to be where the water goes because a byproduct of this chemical reaction that occurs is alcohol you do not want that going into your tank so that's what that little bottle is for it's to filter out the alcohol so we'll punch one hole in the big bottle and two holes in the small bottle and I'll tell you why in a second this is probably warm enough I guess we'll find out right now all right one hole right in the top of there two holes in this one and the reason for two holes in this one is because one airline tubing has to go from your mixture to the cleanout bottle and then from the cleanout bottle to the display tank so that's why you need two two holes so we'll get with that all right and then we'll just let that cool off for a second while I get something else
All right, sorry about that. I'm getting everything today. So I'm gonna actually use a different screwdriver for this. I need a larger one for this size airline tubing. So make the holes a little bit bigger so it fits. Uh, let me know if you guys have ever done this before. Um, let me know how it works for you. Like I said, I've used it on a bunch of my tanks. It works great. I had lush plant growth. Um, I guess the only downfall to this system is you have to keep recharging it about every two to three weeks, depending on your your uh, mixture ratio. So it's kind of annoying. Plus, it's hard to you can't turn it off at night, so it just kind of it kind of runs at night. And plants do not need CO2 at night. They only need it when they photosynthesize. But I've I've never had a problem running it all night. Um, probably not the best option, you know. I'm sure there's a way to to regulate it overnight on the timer, which would be the uh, supercharged version of this. But this is just I'm just doing a simple video on just you know the simplest way to do it. Um, it's it's cheap, it's easy, and it works. So here we go. Let's make this hole a little bit bigger. There we go. There's that one. Right. Cool. Okay, so now we've got our nice clean holes and we can get started cutting airline tubing. All right, make sure that's away. Do not touch that. Bad idea. Okay, so in the first bottle, your solution, you want to mix it up so there's a little bit of room in the top for that CO2 to collect and then be forced into this clean-out bottle. So um, with, with that being said, your airline tubing, um, you need to cut a certain length of this stuff so that it does not touch the bottom and you don't want this end in this bottle touching your solution because you don't, you don't want solution going from this bottle to this bottle. So we'll cut it about like that. Okay, now just unscrew this here cap, and you just poke it in till I don't know, it's about, a, I don't know, an inch and a half below the cap surface, and then poke this one in, and this end you want to go under the water, so it, it, it filters out the alcohol. I mean, I, I suppose it'll drip into there, but um, I just like to stick it down in there, so it so it goes in the water. And then this one as well, you do not want to fill this up all the way because you'll have condensation and alcohol coming from this bottle to this bottle and you don't want it to overflow because it smells like crap when it gets into your house, trust me. Okay, and then this other remaining hole on the top of this one is going to be the tube that goes to your main aquarium where you're going to be utilizing the CO2. So there's that. And you're also gonna want the check valve on that line. So on my take, I already know how how long I need my feed tube, so I can just cut that now. Check that out. Make sure you put this in the right direction. So we'll go in here, like so. And um, basically, you'll put this or this into your tank, another piece of airline tubing, and stick it into the end and this will dispense your CO2 into your tank. So let's get to the solution we're gonna need. Okay, so this one, we'll fill up with water, as well as this one. Let me go get some water real quick. All right, so now I've filled these up. You're gonna wanna put your Fiji, your your, uh, your main mixture about, you know, two thirds full, somewhere in there. Same with, well, this one's about three quarters full. That's fine, you won't get much alcohol out of it. And uh, yeah, now we'll mix our 
or ratio. It's not really a precise ratio. I just kind of eyeball it. But um, I want to shoot for probably about, and let's see, this bottle is 1.5 liters. You're probably going to want almost a, almost a cup of water or a cup of sugar in this one. So it's quite a lot, actually. That around until it dissolves. All right, there's that. And then you can take your active dry yeast. Put a little hole in this packet here. And you don't really need a whole lot of this. Um, if you use a lot, I find it um, it starts really fast the, the the chemical reaction, but it also it only lasts about a week. So you gotta you gotta just play with it and you know figure out the ratio that works for you and your size bottle and stuff like that. But you just want to kind of coat the top of uh, your sugar water solution with uh, the dry yeast, and that that seems to work pretty good for me. So last about two and a half three weeks somewhere in there. So now we'll mix this up. Um, another helpful tip when you're doing this, if you know, if you've already have this system set up and you want to get CO2 back in your tank as soon as possible, um, the warmer this water is, the faster this chemical reaction will happen, and um, the faster you'll get CO2 into your tank. So what you want to see is this stuff will be floating around in here, and it'll start to almost expand, and you'll see this these bubbles come out of it, and it'll it'll yeah, it'll smell really bad, and uh, that's how you know you're getting somewhere, so that's good, that's a good sign. So, you want this kind of milky, milky type color, and you know, when this sits here for about an hour, all of these little yeast um, particles will float to the top and it'll create a foam, and that's what you're looking for, this foam is the CO2 starting to happen. So, so that's a good sign, not a bad thing. So. All right, there we go. Yeah, and again, just as a reminder, these seals up here on the tops of these caps have to be airtight. I mean, they cannot leak anything, and that's what your aquarium silicone is going to be for. I'm not going to put this on here right now because um, I already have a one of these set up on my other tank and I, I can't use it right now. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. So yeah, but make sure, you know, you can even use the super glue too if you want to need to do it fast. Just put a little bit of super glue around the edges. It'll dry in 10 minutes fully or less and then you'll be good to go. Make sure your caps are on tight so you don't leak. And then yeah, that's just up to the main tank. Shred the bubbles up with this and it's as simple as that. And you know, usually this starts to come out into the tank and start working in about an hour or two somewhere in there and um, it works really well like I said it's just it's really awesome it's easy it's cheap I mean the water bottles were probably the most expensive part I got I got this little filter yesterday for 10 bucks on sale all this other stuff but I mean the aquarium silicone is kind of expensive it's about 10 bucks but I mean it's good stuff and it works and you can use it on a lot of different projects so that's good so yeah, this stuff you can find at your grocery store, sugar, dry yeast, that's about five bucks maybe. Um, and if you have a drill or a torch, there you go, you're set up and ready to go. So um, I'll probably make another video on a supercharged version of this and the 100% solubility method of this, but this is just your simple easy way. So there you have it. If you have any questions um, or I totally suck at making videos, let me know and um, hopefully we'll get another one of these cranked out here pretty soon. So thanks again for watching. You guys have a good one.